Hello again, welcome back to another video. My name's Jack, your favorite snack that won't stop talking back. And you must be my lovely listener looming over for today's stories from the internet. Yeah, I kind of gave up on the L theme at the end there. Regardless, thank you for stopping by. Love to have you around. As you wish, here are the stories for today. Remember to like this video to support the channel, and if you do enjoy today's content, why not subscribe so you're always updated on the latest goodies. But with that said, sit back, relax, and enjoy some repartee. This first story by Ice Solid. Am I the a-hole for saying no to paying hundreds of dollars on food? So I'm a 37-year-old male, my girlfriend's 39 years old, and their children, 5-year-old male and 7-year-old female. I have been living my life serving others at the cost of my dreams, goals, and time. I finally got to a point where I make enough money to pay bills, save up, and have a little fun. Therefore, I have a set budget for things. My girlfriend has walked out on me many times for saying no, I cannot afford that. 80% of the time it is because she wants to go out to a costly restaurant where it is going to cost at least $100 for that meal. I have no problem going out to a nice dinner once a month and Denny's every weekend or for a special occasion. However, I cannot afford to do that for every meal. When she comes over with the kids for four plus days at a time, I get things ready. I buy food to make at home. The typical stuff, Cheerios, fruit, bread, bacon, chicken, etc. But yet, she still has to go out and eat because, well, the kids don't like sandwiches. And they want orange chicken from the costly restaurant at $25 a plate. I can't make pancakes in the morning, or the kids can't have cereal because we have to go to the broken yolk. I can't cook us a meal for dinner because the kids want to go to the steakhouse. She is extra mad because I told her I cannot afford to spend $500 to go to Knott's just to eat and stay at a hotel. We live in southern CA and her place is 45 minutes away from Knott's. We do not need to stay at a hotel. Now we are both great cooks and I can understand why she would not want to cook all the time. However, she told me that she and the kids don't like leftovers. I just drop it because I know it is going to be a fight. The thing is, is that I feel she does not understand. I cannot spend all my money on food. I don't have anyone to help me if I can't pay bills. No one is going to feel sorry for me if I can't keep the lights on. Especially if I was going to the casino at least twice a week. Now, am I the a-hole for saying no? I am not paying for us to go out and eat when we have all this food at home. To note, yes, she runs out of money all the time before payday and she only gets one check a month. Okay, I don't want to make a song reference, but uh, that would make an easy joke joke. Nata, first of all, pandemic. But aside from that, she isn't making any effort at all to compromise. If she wants to eat out, she can pay for it and all her own meals. If she can't afford that, she can't do it. She's using you as an ATM. Not the a-hole, you're not a sponsor. You're supposed to be her lover and partner. Leave her broke trifling butthole. Where are the kids' fathers to take them to Broken Steakhouse? He's, uh, he's probably broke. That's where he is. Let her feed her own damn kids on costly dinners. She'll soon start cooking when you're not paying anymore. They don't eat leftovers right now because they've got you. They'll eat leftovers when she's got no money left. With her deed that's been cursed out. I don't... What is that derogative word? D... Dillywhacker? Some people are on the opposite of the spectrum, though. You're the a-hole for staying with this gold-digging succubus. Hey! No song references! But really, for how long this has been going on, mate, it really seems like you're just enabling this behavior. I'd suggest you make her pay half for every single meal. But considering how you mentioned her spending habits, I don't think that would exactly deter her from instigating these things. Either way, buddy, if you're always having to spend some money for her every time you see her or hanging out with her family, then <laughs> it's, it's clear she sees you as nothing more than an ATM with a penis. This is the second video I've referenced an ATM with a penis. Is that going to be a universal thing throughout my videos? Next story, by a throwaway. Am I the a-hole for not letting a woman join our personal bubble in MMA class? For those who don't know what MMA is, it's uh, Manly Master Chef Synonymous. It's an environment of masculine chefs cooking a lot of uh, gym food. No, no, yeah, you can trust me, I googled it. My mama gym has opened back up for the first time since quarantine was imposed and members were advised to create a personal bubble consisting of your usual training partners and stick to it for all classes. They also halved class sizes and reduced class time to 45 and 50 minutes. 
So, I went about creating a bubble consisting of my usual training buddies, who were all similar size to me, and just as we were getting ready to warm up, a short, petite woman, who none of us had seen before, asked to join because she thought we seemed nice and all got along well with each other. I was the first to respond and politely reject her, to which she took great offense and demanded to know why. I stayed polite and friendly throughout, but told her that we are all significantly bigger and stronger than her, and we couldn't spar and drill at the intensity we liked. She was also new to martial arts, and there would be a huge skill gap in the group, meaning each one of us would have to sacrifice valuable training time teaching her basic things. Under normal circumstances, I am happy to help new members, but we are limited to how much time we can spend in the gym, and I want to get back to the level I was pre-COVID. She joined another group better suited to her afterwards, but she and her group kept giving me snake eyes during the session. The guys I trained with said after that, taking her in wouldn't have been a huge deal and that it would have avoided any awkwardness. She went to complain to an assistant coach after the class and spun it around as me being a sexist who wouldn't let her into our boys club. Now my reputation is damaged within the gym and the guys who I'm supposed to train with until COVID is no longer an issue are peeved with me. I feel as a paying member who has no coaching obligations within the gym, I have the right to choose who I train with, especially during these strange times. Am I the a-hole? TLDR told a woman that she wouldn't have been a good fit for our training group in the basis of size and experience. Now see, what you need to do is hire a really short guy to come into the gym and ask to join your group while she's also at the gym and just loudly, very broadly explain the same reasons you explained to her. That'll... <laughs> <laughs> that won't be petty at all. But seriously, w what did you do wrong here? You said no to someone. Oh, you horrible a-hole. Oh, but he did reject her because she was a woman. No, he rejected her because she was small and weak and not as trained as them. MMA isn't just like a crossfit or little gym session with doing weights together. It's like sparring. You're hitting each other. You're physically overpowering your opponent. And if you aren't trained in the proper techniques, you can be seriously hurt by someone who knows what they're doing. Nata, it sounds like having her train with your group would be a potential safety issue. An opposite point though, you are the a-hole. People spar with all sorts of different sizes and levels. What you mean is you didn't want to spar with her. Did you even ask any of your bubble what they thought? No, you spoke for the whole group, which you had no right to do. What you should have done is say, guys, give us a minute, to talk about it and then decide as a group. Maybe one of them might have been happy to help her out. Agreed. You are not wrong by the rules. You have no obligation to accept that woman into your group. But that doesn't change that you're a bit of a peahead for thinking she can't follow you because you deemed her weak. Not because she was, but because you decided to. So, okay, yeah, there are some fair points. It is possible some people in that group might have actually been totally okay training her up. While I won't agree this has anything to do with her being a woman, I will agree to the possibility that maybe he just didn't want to bother training a newbie. He did mention wanting to get back to his level he was pre-COVID, so it is possible he just didn't want to waste time giving someone the ropes. As a fit and strong 6 foot 1 21 year old, I couldn't keep up with the more advanced people when I first started MMA. There's no way in hell she would have been able to keep up with them or spar anywhere near their level. Even if you're a gym junkie, you can't join martial arts and expect to be able to keep up. Thank you, Mr. Taylor, for admitting how weak you are. But seriously, that is the kind of point I'm standing with here. She wasn't necessarily too weak for them, it's just that she wasn't as trained as them, and that is a risk. That, and she found another group to join anyway. And his group was already sorted out beforehand as to be their bubble, so sure, trying to join in, I feel it's just really breaking the rules, is it not? She was going to realize eventually that she couldn't keep up with their levels. And due to that bubble rule they seem to be having at this gym, it's not like she could just run around to find another group to join. Honestly, it really seems like this guy had no way to win this situation. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. What do you think though? Maybe because I'm a guy, I'm being slightly biased somehow, but I don't know. I'm trying to see it from other points of view and it just really seems like this is rather petty of an issue to complain about. Regardless, what do you think? Next story by Never Skies. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister that her son's name is horrible and he is going to get bullied? My sister gave birth to her son last week. When I went to the hospital to see her and my nephew, she told me that she has named him Pika after Pikachu. 
because her boyfriend was obsessed with Pokemon when he was younger. I couldn't help but burst out in laughter because it sounded so ridiculous. My sister got very angry with me and asked me why is that funny. Like, I told her straight up that Pika is the most horrible name I have ever heard, and her son is probably going to get bullied for the rest of his life. Now, she isn't talking to me because I apparently disrespected my nephew, but am I wrong for wanting him to have a normal name? I'm honestly in disbelief that she genuinely wants to name her son that. I'm not even gonna look at the comments of this one. That is just, <laughs> it's just so dumb. So you're having a son. Your mate really loves Pokemon. Hmm. What's the name of a character from that show that we can name our son after? Oh boy. Ah, uh, who? I know. One of the animals. Like, holy smokes, mama. You could have at least gone with Brock. I, I mean, it's still a stupid name, but at least it was a human being it's being named after. Pika doesn't even sound like a boy's name. Like, I'm not really one to try and push gender norms onto kids and that kind of stuff. Kids should be able to do what the hell they want, but <laughs> it's like, come on. Y you gotta understand, people are gonna make fun of that. At least let the child choose to name themselves Pika. That way, if they grow out of it, they're free to no longer call themselves that. You're, you're making this their legal name. I look forward in 18 years' time to come back to this subreddit and find a, am I the a-hole for wanting to change my legal name from Pika to something normal? This next story by Madge588. Am I the a-hole for blaming my sister's boyfriend for both my dogs getting cancer? I am fascinated to find out the correlation in this one. My sister is dating somebody that nobody likes. Typical person that your friends and family members won't like. He has a bad temper. They're always fighting in public. Doesn't pay for rent or contribute to other costs like groceries, utilities, car maintenance, etc. Doesn't have insurance and drives recklessly in my sister's car, which is under my insurance. Gave my sister an STD, always wants to drink, and to top it all off, we went on a big family trip, and we were all supposed to meet at the airport at a certain time, but he came way late, cause he was partying, and didn't think it was a big deal not to make the time we agreed upon. <laughs> oh, and he also came to the airport really drunk, and was cussing and yelling at my sister throughout the whole TSA process, at the gate, and in the airplane. So, suffice it to say, I don't like him. Ah, oh, what are you talking about? He's got such redeemable qualities. About two years ago, I was working a really demanding job that required a lot of traveling. So I decided it'd be best to have my sister watch my dogs. When I visited, I noticed that whenever my sister and her boyfriend took the dogs out, they would also take a smoke break. I asked him not to do that, and he said it's not a problem because he blows the smoke away from the dogs, which is so stupid. The dog is on a leash. You're still so close to it. A friend of my sister also told me the boyfriend kicks the dogs to discipline them. Anyway, I found a new job as quickly as I could and got my dogs back. Unfortunately, earlier this year, both my dogs got the same type of cancer a month apart. They're not related at all, so I know it's not genetic. They're not old either. I always feel like the smoke contributed to the cancer. My sister says that I'm an a-hole for bringing that up to her. I know she would not have smoked around the dogs if it weren't for her boyfriend convincing her it's okay. Am I the a-hole for being angry about them smoking near the dogs? I'll admit my dislike for the boyfriend makes it easier to be upset about things he does. But with all the things related to his behavior, she says that there's no point in bringing up things that have happened in the past. I also understand that many things can cause cancer, but it's just weird on me that it's the same exact cancer for both dogs, diagnosed at around the same time. They've been otherwise very healthy for many years. TLDR, sister is dating a di- Oh, it's that word! Oh, okay. Dillywhacker, who smoked near my dogs, and now both dogs have the same type of cancer, diagnosed around the same time. Am I the a-hole for getting mad at my sister about this? You're the a-hole. Unless a vet told you, point blank, the smoke caused or worsened the cancer, then you're just speculating. And that's all fine and good. You can have that opinion. <laughs> it may even be right. And you know now, based on everything else, that you probably shouldn't leave things you care about with your sister or the boyfriend. But all that doesn't mean you get to accuse him of causing the problem. Because you don't really know for sure. Yeah, true. I mean, as much of a terrible scum this guy sounds like, <laughs> let's be honest, even if this was a one-sided opinion, that's still a heck of a lot of examples to be making. But the issue here isn't whether or not he's an a-hole, it's whether or not she's justified to accuse him of, well, unlifing her pets. 
And as scummy as he sounds, I'm gonna say no, you aren't justified. At least not with the evidence at hand. No way holes here, I'm really sorry about your dogs and I hope you all had a nice bit of time together. It's understandable to want to place the blame somewhere, but sometimes life just sucks. You are the a-hole. Even if it is the smoke, unlikely, the person responsible for caring for them who knowingly and repeatedly put them into that setting is the one at fault. Ooh, a bit of passive aggressiveness there, I like it. But I agree, look, yes, secondhand smoking is a thing that can happen. But while your accusation that he was kicking your dogs is based off a witness's account, your smoking accusations aren't exactly based off anything but your own assumptions and the fact you know that he smokes. And last I checked, this wasn't a WAP music video, so there shouldn't be so much assumptions going around. You are the a-hole to be accusing him of this, and as well to try and excuse your sister just because, oh, she would have been talked into doing it by her boyfriend. <laughs> that, it's still her choice to be smoking regardless. If he truly was the one who caused this, your sister is equally to blame then. So if you are going to stand by this belief, you better double down and go after your sister as well. Either way though, you're absolutely valid to be feeling hurt. I will say that. Just be more certain that it is actually justified to be letting that hate onto someone. Well, that's gonna do us with our stories today, guys. Thank you so much for sticking by to watch it all. Your engagement genuinely means a lot to me. I, I love that you actually <laughs> watch the entire videos. So, please leave a like on this video so I know what's working with my content. And again, if there's any thoughts or perspectives that I've completely missed, please let me know. <laughs> it won't be the first time I've done it. And hey, there's only one way to grow. And that's through reading verbal abuse from people's opinions on the internet. So please, tell me how much of a horrible person I am. No, but seriously, I do love the feedback, as constructive or criticizing it can be sometimes. And if you are genuinely enjoying your time here and want to be seeing more, then please subscribe. I try to upload on the daily so that you can get all the latest goodies of the stories from the internet. Now, I shall be off. Once again, it's been a lovely time rambling with you today. I look forward to seeing you for the next one. My name's been Jack. And I love your faces.